Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Svartz, I'm Sander Lepkant. Um, I do speak Latvian, but I was told I had to speak in English, and probably my English is better from a technology perspective anyway. Um, so now that we've all eaten lunch, we're probably all going to fall asleep. Hopefully, I can keep you awake for a little bit. So we're here to talk about risk management. Where is the information? I've actually been in risk management for several years now. And the presentation is basically a culmination of the research and working with clients over the last four years. Not a lot of people talk about where is the information. Today's technology world, we're interconnected with all different types of things. We have online communities, we have integrated e-applications, we have PCI, we have data mining, we have mobile devices, we have all sorts of technology. We have firewalls, IDS, Wi-Fi, VoIP, we have PLCs, we heard all about you know, programmable logical controllers this morning, and all the security issues surrounding those. In today's application market, we're looking at speed to market. Everybody wants it now. We have to be first out there. And the first thing that people will sacrifice is the security just to get it to speed to market. But we forget about that to make all of these applications work, we need a secure infrastructure in place. We need the transportation to be encrypted. We have to have secure data storage. The applications have to be developed securely as well. One of my favorite organizations is actually OWASP, and I see that they're a sponsor here as well, because OWASP provides a framework to be able to securely develop applications, tools to be able to test those applications that provide best practices. We also need to have full operational support in place as well. We need to have legal and regulatory compliance for these systems as well. And information security and security of data security of applications, as we're developing these, we have to integrate information security as part of the process up front, not try to retrofit it later, because it doesn't work. We look at the three pillars of information security, and we've all seen these. This is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Today, we've got technology, social media. I look at technology it just is. We expect it to work. Just as we have a light switch, you turn it on and off, you expect the internet to be there, you expect your business systems to be there. We also have commentary that's lightning speed. I've worked with organizations and municipalities and cities where you have grassroots organizations that keep a tight eye watch on what's going on. And as soon as they hear about something that they don't like, they start tweeting about it. And our information is everywhere. Information in the internet. And this may sound like um, apple pie and motherhood to security professionals and IT professionals, but I put these slides up for business people. When's the last time you Googled yourself? When's the last time you looked to see how much information is actually about you on the internet? What is being said? We also find that personal views become very public. All of a sudden, our business lives and our, bus our business and our personal lives are crossing. And we need to be careful about what we say out on the internet because those things on the internet are there forever. What happens when you delete information? One of the regulations from a, a Latvian perspective um, is that there's also freedom of information requests. So being able to request that information once you delete information, is it really deleted? From a government perspective, you need to be able to retain certain information for periods of time. But still, people forget that once you hit delete on the internet, it's still out there, potentially forever. And information, from a corporate perspective, should be destroyed on a records retention, perspective. Records retention policy Electronic mail in the internet. We still, so many people forget that when you're using electronic mail in the internet, it's out there in the free world. Everything that you say is potentially going clear text unless it's been encrypted. The other thing, when you're sending information from one organization to another, 
you have no control over the security of the other organization and what they're going to do with the information. You may hold and guard your information very tightly and with great security controls and a great elevation of security consciousness, but who you're sending it to, what are they doing with it? Also, by the time you've actually sent, if I send, my, if I send anyone here an email, how many different gateways does it go through? How many places is it stored? Quite a few. As security professionals, I love this picture because it's the monkey. Historically, all security professionals, when you come, the business comes to them, they stand there and they go, no, 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 no. We can't do this, we can't do that. It's not secure. The problem when we say it's not secure, what the business does is they go out and if they have the ability, they will purchase and buy whatever services that they want and they will traverse the IT department. And now they are introducing risk into the organization. Within your organizations, do you know how many third-party hosted solutions that you potentially have? People, things that you would never imagine have been incorporated into certain infrastructures. What we need to do, we need to integrate information security as part of the business and use it as a business enabler. I don't look at security as a separate silo. And I know for a very long time, we've had IT departments, they're here. Marketing is here. Finance is here. Whatever else you have. IT spans across everything. It enables an organization to be able to function and do its business. What we need to do is say yes to information security, work proactively with the business, because they're going to do whatever they want anyway and work with them to understand what the risks are. And that way, we can actually potentially mitigate some of those risks. And also teach the business the risks of information security, good information security practices, and how to implement those. Particularly when, if and when they do sign contracts for, let's say, a software as a service, then they can potentially have a checklist to identify all the questions that they need to ask these providers so you don't end up in hot water later. We have the perfect store today. With all of the hacktivism that's going on, things have been, be, you know, between there's Ashley Madison, you have um, Charlie Miller taking over cars, you have various things happening all over the place. You know, in the US, Target's been hacked, so many people have been hacked. Organizations are starting to pay attention, as well as financial organizations in particular at a board level are starting to talk about cybersecurity and about information. And it's about taking a risk-based approach, working with senior management, giving them dashboards so they actually understand what an organization, as an organization, what you're doing. And it's taking a proactive business approach so they understand the risk. And in some cases, business may want to accept the risk, but they have to clearly identify, they have to clearly understand what the potential is. My goals from a risk management perspective is that you have information technology, information security, and the business working all in partnership and in concert to identify risks to mitigate them, to manage them, and to report on those. The key thing for risk management is to identify what is high risk to an organization, what is critical, what's personal, what's private, what's credit card, what credit card information you have, what personal health information you have, and securing those appropriately based on legal and regulatory compliance requirements. When's the last time you ever walked by and saw a PC that didn't have a screensaver on it? Saw a PC in a council chamber that was used for presentations or connected to a network? Perused your departmental shared drive. How much confidential information is potentially being stored on there? We trust each other, but should that information reside there? How about USB sticks? CDs, all of those things lying around, what's on them? Semantic talked about people picking up 
USB sticks and plugging them in. The easiest way to prevent that is to lock down the workstations. Have you ever wondered what's in someone's recycling bin? <laughs> I have. <laughs> I used to do this years ago. Um, I was actually the CSO for a, a multinational packaged goods organization, and I worked in Canada, US, and Europe. And uh, late at night, I would be working 7, 8 o'clock at night, because I was away, at away from home, and I would actually go through the office and see what people left on their desks and what they threw out in the garbage. And I actually got janitors to help me go see what was in the, uh, in the dumpsters. It was actually quite interesting and eye-opening. We found marketing plans, we found business plans, we found company financials. I don't think that's information that people actually want out. The other thing that, that comes up more and more and more, I was working with a client and checking the properties on electronic documents. Um, they're a government organization and they replied to a freedom of information request. It was actually a firefighter. So the superintendent had to uh, provide information regarding this firefighter and why his salary was so high. So he was writing the response in Word, wrote things that he probably shouldn't have written, deleted all of it, but he had revisions set on the document. Sent the document, it went out to the media outlet. As soon as it popped up, everything that he had typed was redlined out. So the person at the media outlet could actually see his thoughts and what he had deleted. So it's always good to check your documents before you send them out. One of the things that I like to do are senior management interviews and understand what senior management is concerned about. Having candid discussions with senior managers, management teams. And when I do this type of work, I never take notes of who is actually talking. We always categorize things by a department because we don't want to identify individuals and point people out. But talk about what they're worried about. What are their uh, what types of threats and risks? What's the most critical information that they have? Has anything happened previously that they're concerned about that may happen again that we need to put um, processes in place to minimize that risk? Are there any new projects that need information security integrated into it? It's not about saying no. It's not about being the monkey. It's about helping them understand. It's also about thinking and talking about information. What is critical to that organization? Taking a risk-based approach to the information in identifying how much security. Do they have a data classification in place? Is that information being segregated within the network based upon um, the classification? For highly confidential information, you need to have an extreme amount of security, or for personal health data, personal information, personal data. But if it's public information, does it really need that much? It's putting the controls in place where it's most required. I also look at information security. It's never black and it's never white. We will never have complete perfection. It's shades of gray, and it's managing those shades of gray and understanding where the risks are, trying to minimize it. Also, accepting, avoiding, reducing, or transferring the risk. One of the things from a risk transfer perspective is we can never transfer the risk to an outsourcer. Ultimately, the organization and their senior management are always responsible for the information, the protection of that information, even though it's out of your control. And the number one thing is education and training. We have to train our staff to know what to do. What I found, what senior managers didn't talk about, they never talked about firewalls, they never talked about technology. They always assume that the IT department is working in their best interest and in doing whatever they need to do. If there was an incident, they would be notified. One of the things that they did talk about was People, the loss of knowledge and corporate history of how to do things. People are retiring. 
are all policies and processes document so newer staff, up and coming managers can actually take over? Have all of the processes and procedures, are they implemented? Are they documented? Have new systems taken place where automation has happened, but it's not been documented? One example that I had uh, from a client was that prior to every Mother's Day, the municipality cuts all of the, the, the cemeteries so they're ready for Mother's Day. The question that the superintendent has was, this is an unwritten rule within the organization. Has that been documented somewhere, or is it because of the long history that this just happens? Information management, how do we handle our information? Governance, generally, most of the time, there's no clear governing body, no mandate, and no oversight. The weakest link is still our people, our processes. From a risk analysis summary perspective, the yellows are where need work. Senior management thought the technology components were OK. In most cases, we have third-party websites, software as a service. As technology professionals, we know those are areas of risk. But they thought those were left in good hands. Where they were concerned was the portability of data, data leakage, data loss, new technology projects, security and privacy training for staff. Not just generic, but specific to certain tasks or certain departments, how human resources handles information. The knowledge level, the corporate consciousness, having information classification strategies in place, records retention. How do you delete that information from all of your information systems that you've had running for the past 10, 15, or 20 years? Or is all the information still there? Moving forward, the road forward. People are a huge factor. If people don't understand how to use technology, don't embrace the technology, don't follow policies and procedures, serious inc incidents can occur. Um, threat, data leakage, data theft, misuse. If we don't teach people what to do, you think of a small child, you tell them, and I did this as a child, my mom said, don't put your hand on the stove because it's hot. Okay. Sandra, don't put your hand on the stove. Well, later that evening, my mother found out because I had a blister on my finger that I had put my finger on a hot stove. Even though you tell people not to do something, they will still go out and do it. But building a consciousness level from an early onset and integrating it, I find banking environments where people are brought into an organization with formal policies, procedures, structure, it becomes a way of life. So in my case, I never put my finger on a hot element again. I learned my lesson. But we don't want people to learn their lesson by taking information on USB sticks and potentially losing it. So culture is critical. With people retiring over the next several years, um, it's important for people to pass down the information to have a security conscious culture, to keep the workforce engaged so they have that trusted relationship within the organization. I also look at it that we're in a 15 year process. And I've been in information security now for 20 years. Um, I was probably one of the first CISOs uh, in North America. And I kind of look at it, in 15 years, we're still doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, we had the internet 15 years ago plus. Um, I've been working on the internet since 1994. But then we had firewalls in place. Then we forgot about the firewalls because Y2K happened. We had policies and procedures in place. Back in those days, Everybody had documentation on specifically how people had to dress and come to work. We were over-documented, now we're under-documented. People are creating new policies and procedures based on social media, on cloud computing, PCI, email. What's old is new again, and we need to revisit all of those things to instill that culture of security. 
All our technology is now being updated. We've got some really cool next generation fire firewalls that I just love because they're dealing with level, level seven applications. So you can actually figure out what people are doing on your network, where they're going, what information is leaving your network, decrypting SSL, how much time people are spending on social media, and all of the information is there. And as security professionals and as business, it helps us both. We also have access control, information management, systems management, information security, awareness training, having a risk management approach. What's old is new again. We're just repackaging it and looking at it from a different perspective. One of my things that I strive to, to do is to integrate information security, the confidentiality, integrity, availability as part of every single new project within an organization. And why? Because it's far easier to fix something upfront or create the security, the privacy, the architecture, than trying to retrofit it later when you find a problem or just as you're about to launch, oh yes, we need to do a security review. It doesn't work because you always find problems. At least by doing the project integration, you can do things like privacy by design, review it as an iterative process to make sure that if there are deficiencies in place, then those can be remediated before the product is actually launched. So my little infographic of how to integrate it. So looking at project, in, project initiation, the security requirements, the business risk, the exposure, Security and risk analysis, remediation, testing, and then implementation. It's, a, it's a, an entire life cycle. So information, where's the risk? I always look at it as doing from a threat risk assessment perspective. You have technology, you have people, you have processes. Where's the information? Sometimes it's not as easy to decipher it doing, it's understanding how the information is being collected, how is it distributed, who has access to it, what are the safeguards in place, what are the threats, what are the assets, who has access to it, making recommendations on how to secure all of those components. That's it. Any questions? Perfect. You are perfectly on time. Uh, yes, please raise your hands if you, if you have questions. Has anyone done anything like that within their own company, within their own resources, or by outsourcing a security specialist? Or you are yourselves the security specialist? Now, it's a, it's a, it's a very good thing uh, that you actually put it down like step by step by step. And this is, this oh. is what sometimes actually, companies what really need to... The, this, this slide, these two slides, I actually do as a double-sided laminate for IT departments and for business. And, and that, why information security is important, and then actually having the process. So for IT departments and business analysts and business people, having it there for them so they can incorporate that and not forget about information security. Yeah, uh, my, my next question is now, one thing is uh, implementing it and showing it and so, and another thing is to follow it. So once, once your job is done, you eventually m maybe leave as a consultant and so, how do you ensure that these, that these policies or how the company can ensure that these policies are there to stay, to be followed. So it's, as you said, it's not enough to, to tell one or even two times, uh, don't touch this toe. So uh, we have to make sure that, that this work, this uh, investment, by the way, stays there. Oh, I, I think that I've personally been very fortunate when I work with clients, they actually call me in because they want the help. And it's not writing a report or an audit report that will sit on a shelf. What I try and do is give them, pro give them tools to be able to integrate it. And 
Ironically enough, the same clients that I've had for the last 15 years, I've been working with them for the last 15 years on various different projects. And so they value these types of things and they, usually somebody within the manage gr management group, whether from a business perspective, from an IT or a security, will take charge of this and integrate it into their day-to-day -day processes and procedures. So it becomes part of their culture. Yeah, but uh, so, so it happens when you enter some company, it doesn't matter is it a software company or a typical company, and you walk through the office and you see immediately the possible breaches and things to be fixed. And, and, and uh, so uh, is, uh, how do you handle, now, now it's one thing to, to, to see everything uh, of that within a separate company where you are as a consultant, it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to communicate, to see it. So, so when you are within your own organization, and there's of course some, some, some politics and there's departments and there's some things are allowed and some things are not allowed. So sometimes it, for, the, for the insider, it may become a little harder to, to push some of these things, even if they are obvious. And even if the boss says, yes, I understand your point, but. Yes. I, information security is one of these things that I find it has to come from senior management. There has to be a philosophy overall within the organization. I've seen numerous organizations try to do bottom up and they are fairly successful at doing it, but they're more focused on the technological components that people leave them alone with. Mm -hmm. Trying to integrate it with the business, that's why talking to, elevating it to a, a higher level of talking to business people about what they feel is important to the organization, what risks they have, things that they have had, have had exposure to, things that have gone wrong and their lessons learned. Once they find out those things and they're shared, and risk registers are actually a great way to have those incorporated into the risk plans of the organization, because then audit now, the audit committees can take over. So okay. that's one way that it's integrated. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, here's a, no, one little nice th thank you from, okay. from the organizers of okay. the conference. Paul a Dales. warm applause, please.